What are the top five best cities here in Alaska? You know, that's something we'll be talking about today. My name's Jamin Gerker. I'm a local realtor with Keller Williams, and I'm here to help you to build an intentional and significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching you in real estate. And today we're gonna to be talking about the top five best cities in Alaska, best cities or towns. I did a video uh, like this a couple of years ago, and I've had a chance to actually go around and kind of uh, preview some more towns since then. So I went ahead and made an updated list of the top five uh, best cities in Alaska even if you're just looking at visiting while you're up here so before we get started though do make sure you give this video a like subscribe if you haven't done so already and let's go and jump into today's video now this list of cities is not going to be in any particular order and it's gonna be pretty light on statistics because really I'm gonna be kind of going off more of the vibe of the town than I am really anything else so number one is going to be Seward. Now, I really do like Seward, and this has stayed on the list from the year before, just because it's kind of a small town. It's got the amazing mountains all the way around. It's got the hardy ice fields right there you can go hiking on. It's got a ton of other hiking trails in the wintertime. It's got some pretty good cross-country trails. Um, you've got the ocean right there, so if you want to go out for a charter or go check out the glaciers on a cruise or kayaking, you can certainly do that. Plus, Seward also has a lot of like just great history attached with the prop with the entire town as well it was established back in i believe it was 1910 if i recall correctly um, i could be wrong don't light me up in the comment section if i'm wrong about that but it has a long history and um, it actually was a, a pretty big developing up and coming little town until the 64 earthquake came through and the subsequent three tsunamis that kind of went through there and wiped out a good portion of the town so it's got a lot of history and um, it's got the Sea Life Center down there and a bunch of other cool stuff. So if you're just looking for a quick day trip that's not too far away from Anchorage, then that's definitely a great place to go. So Seward definitely does earn a place on this list. The second city that I really like here in Alaska is going to be Palmer. Now, I'm really partial to Palmer because I have a lot of family that, that lives there. So I'm pretty sure that kind of factors into it. But it's really kind of a, a small uh, farmer's community is what it kind of feels like. So it's absolutely surrounded by mountains. If you're over on the, the Butte area, then it's really spectacular because you've got Pioneer Peak, which is really the kind of iconic mountain in the area that is just bigger than life, just looming right over. And you've just got those, you know, level fields and everything right there. You've got, you know, trees everywhere, like actual trees that actually grow up to like, you know, actual tree size. Not like when you go further up north and the trees look like they're from a Dr. Seuss book or something. They're like, you know, actual legit trees in the Palmer area. Um, if you're really into motorbiking and all this other stuff, they've got that over in Jim Creek. And um, it's just kind of a really, really small town vibe over there. And um, really it's just kind of come across as, as wholesome in a lot of ways, just from my impression, I haven't personally lived there, but my family's there and that has definitely been everyone's experience there. So, you know, Palmer definitely does deserve a place on this list as well. Now, the next town slash city that I'm gonna have on here, and it's gonna be on here for, you know, completely different reasons than what we've seen before, but I'm gonna say Eagle River slash Anchorage. So, um, I consider Eagle River and Anchorage as not being quite the same thing. Eagle River is kind of this, this small little suburb well, not really small, but a suburb of Anchorage that's about 34,000 people, if I recall correctly. And it's really nice because it kind of has a lot of the conveniences of a town or city. So it's got, you know, Walmart, it's got Fred Meyers, has its own restaurants, has its own uh, gas stations and everything. Um, really, you don't really technically need to leave Eagle River for a lot of reasons. And it still kind of maintains just this really, you know, kind of wholesome small town vibe. And that's not to say that, you know, they're, uh, it's Mayberry by any stretch of the imagination, but it also is a small little tight knit community out here that, um, you know, everyone kind of supports the local businesses here as best we can. And, um, you know, it definitely has that going for it. And then Anchorage right down the road. Some people really don't like Anchorage because uh, it's called a lost Anchorage by some folks here in the area because it's just seen as having more crime and having more of a homeless issue, which is definitely something your river doesn't really deal with as much. Um, I think we got one token homeless guy a couple summers ago, but that, that really was about it. Anchorage is kind of nice in some ways though, because it does have a wider selection of, of stores as a Costco. Um, it does have, you know, if we do have any of uh, big name people coming in for concerts, that's usually where they're going to gravitate towards. 
and then you know you do have the the coastal trails and everything else that's going on at Anchorage as well so if you're looking for kind of a, a city vibe like a nice bar or a nice restaurant or something like that Anchorage is probably going to be the place that you kind of gravitate towards Let's take a break real quick here. For those of you who've been watching for a while, you know that I host a podcast called the Alaskan Journey Podcast, in which I interview people who have recently moved up here or have been living up here for years and kind of talk about their authentic experience from having lived up here for a while. So if you're just trying to get your trying to get your bearings, try to see what this whole Alaska thing is all about, do make sure you go check that out. Link for that is going to be down below. And if you would like a copy of my relocation guide, even if you're just curious, make sure to reach out on my website. Again, a link for that is going to be down below and on the website. Just make sure you put relocation guide into the little message box so I know what to send you. Now, let's go ahead and get to the last two of my favorite cities here in Alaska. All right, number four here is actually a, a city that I visited, I think it was about six months ago or so during the, the winter time. And I just needed a little time to kind of get off the grid a little bit. So I decided to go to Kodiak, Alaska. Now, Kodiak is really cool because it's an island it's it's only about i remember like 20 or so miles miles long sorry if i that's not exact troll me i don't care i remember it being about 20 miles long or so and the cool thing about it is i was actually able to get onto the ferry and take my car there and then i was able to, to just kind of walk around visit the town a little bit kodiak is really cool because you've obviously you got the kodiak bears and uh, they're a real thing i think i saw like eight bears within like the, the first couple of days. So they're all over down there. Uh, Kodiaks are pretty big. You've got kind of the, the, uh, the rainforest vibe down there. It's really quiet when you're in there. You don't really get a whole lot of snow in Kodiak. It's more of a, more of a rainforest kind of an environment. And uh, the bears don't hibernate either, by the way. So yeah, my head was on a swivel that entire time I was out there hiking because I was all by myself too. So that's a little eerie. And uh, yeah, the, the moss really makes everything really muffled. So yeah, we, we can talk about more about that later. But um, Kodiak is really cool because you've got the mountains around there. You've got the, the hikes you can go do. You've got uh, some of the old World War II relics that are still laying around where you can go visit that. And you know, again, I'm a big history person. So that was really cool. And they also have some pretty nice beaches over on the other side of the island. Like I remember kind of driving across there and um, it kind of feels otherworldly, like you're at the end of the world or something because you're just driving along and it gets kind of agriculture-like back there. Uh, where it kind of feels like Middle Earth and the Shire or something. You get like these Holstein cows that are just you know wandering across. So you've got these farmers out in the middle of nowhere. And it's like, man, what are you doing out here? <laughs> you get out there to the beach and it's actually like, you know, a pretty good beach. Um, some, a lot of surfers actually do go to Kodiak just for the, the surfing beach that's out there. It's not really what you would think Kodiak would be known for, but it certainly is there. And, um, you know, there's some other really cool uh, things to do over in Kodiak while you're there also. Um, just make sure you've got enough activities to keep you busy. I got there kind of a slow time of the year and I couldn't really do a whole lot. <laughs> so I found out the hard way that if, unless you have other activities, Kodiak is probably a two, three day town max. Um, Cause other than get a, getting around and hiking and stuff like that, not a whole lot to be done there. So plan accordingly. Last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and put Valdez on this list as well. Now. I didn't really get a whole lot of time to, to spend in Valdez the, the couple times that I've gone there because I've kind of been kind of transitory coming in and out there. I did get a chance to go visit there, and I think it was actually about a year ago. And um, you know, just kind of a small, quaint little town. They've got the they've got the pass you need to get through, and the drive getting there is just absolutely beautiful if you're coming from Anchorage because you have to loop up and around and come to Valdez from the interior, and then you get to like this little ocean town out there. And you've obviously got the, the charters, the, all the fishing you can do out there. Um, you can do lots of snow machining up in the mountains. I saw a lot of um, ice climbing going on with, um, with the frozen waterfalls that are there. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's another thing that's another town that's really nice. Um, from what I could see, the people there were you know, pretty warm and receptive, but then again, you know, I didn't get a chance to spend a whole lot of time with them, so I could be completely wrong there. But this has been your updated list of the five best cities in Alaska. If you have any other cities you'd like to put on this list or that you think deserves on this list or that you don't believe belongs on this list, feel free to drop those in the comments section down below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.